In this example, we'll use the shell method to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region in the first quadrant bounded by the given curve y equals four minus the quantity x minus four squared about the y-axis. So looking here in the lower left, this would be the bounded region in the first quadrant. If we rotate this region about the y-axis, it would give us this solid and our goal is to find the volume of this solid using the shell method. Because we have a vertical axis of rotation, the volume is equal to two pi times the integral of p of x times h of x integrated with respect to x from a to b. Before we talk about what these, before we talk about what p of x and h of x represent, it's always helpful to sketch a representative rectangle that if rotated about the y-axis would represent the approximate volume of one shell of our solid. When using the shell method, the representative rectangle will always be parallel to the axis of rotation. So let's use this rectangle here to help set up our integral. If we rotated this about the y-axis, again it would give us the approximate volume of one shell of our solid, maybe this shell here. Notice how the width of the rectangle would be delta x. This is why we integrate with respect to x, where p of x would be the distance from the center of the rectangle to the axis of rotation, which would be this distance here. And h of x would be the height of the rectangle, which would be this distance here. So notice p of x is just the horizontal distance here along the x-axis. So p of x equals x. And h of x would be the function value given by four minus the quantity x minus four squared. And now we have all the information we need to set up our integral to find the volume. The volume is equal to two pi times the integral of p of x, which is x, times h of x, which is the function value four minus the quantity x minus four squared, integrated with respect to x from two to six, which are the x-intercepts of our function. Now let's go ahead and evaluate this on the next slide. Let's begin by simplifying the integrand. So we'll square the quantity x minus four. So we'd have four minus the quantity x squared minus eight x plus sixteen. Let's go ahead and clear these parentheses and combine like terms. So notice how we have four minus sixteen, that's negative twelve. And then we'd have minus x squared plus eight x. Now let's go ahead and distribute the x. So we'd have negative twelve x minus x to the third plus eight x squared. Next we'll find the antiderivative. The antiderivative of negative twelve x to the first would be negative twelve times x to the second divided by two minus the antiderivative of x to the third would be x to the fourth divided by four and then plus eight times the antiderivative of x to the second which would be x to the third divided by three. Let's go ahead and simplify this. So we have, this would be negative six x squared. Let's write this as minus one fourth x to the fourth plus eight thirds x to the third. Now we'll evaluate this at six and two and then find the difference. So when x is six, we'd have negative six times six squared minus one-fourth times six to the fourth plus eight-thirds times six to the third. And then when x is two, we'd have minus six times two squared 
minus one fourth times two to the fourth plus eight thirds times two to the third. To save some time, I've already simplified this. Comes out to two pi times this quantity here simplifies to thirty-six minus this quantity here simplifies to negative twenty-thirds. Notice how this becomes plus twenty-thirds. So we end up having two pi, I'll write two pi over one times, this works out to one hundred twenty-eight thirds. Nothing simplifies here, so the exact volume would be 256 pi divided by three cubic units. Let's get an approximate volume as well. We have 256 pi divided by three. If we round to four decimal places, this would be approximately 268.0826. I hope you found this helpful.